mass spectrometer. Now that electric and magnetic fields have both been presented, it is time to show an application that uses both types of fields. A mass spectrometer is used to separate out atoms and molecules based on their mass and is used to analyze the physical makeup of substances in terms of their relative concentrations of their constituent parts. They're sometimes featured on forensic crime shows when the lab is trying to determine what a sample is composed of. Here is a screenshot from CSI Vegas. A particle is given a velocity v and shot horizontally through an electric field. In this example, the particle has a positive charge and the electric field is pointing upwards. Which direction will the particle be deflected? A positive charge will feel an upwards force in this electric field. So it will deflect upwards. What if, instead of an electric field, the positive charge is fired through a magnetic field that is pointing out of the page. Which way will the charge be deflected? Use the right hand rule and it will show you that this charge will feel a downwards force this way. Now we're going to combine those two ideas into the first part of a mass spectrometer, the velocity selector. The substance to be analyzed is charged and injected into the left side of the velocity selector. An electric field is directed upwards and a magnetic field is put perpendicular to it and directed out of the page. And here there's going to be a slit at the right side which only allows particles that are undeflected by the two fields to pass through. We're going to go over this math on the next slide. Let's analyze the forces being exerted on this particle. And we are also assuming that gravitational effects are negligible. So the only two forces acting on this particle are the electric field upwards here and the magnetic field downwards. So if those are equal, it will not accelerate up or down. It will go straight. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to pick out all the particles that have the exact same speed. So we have Newton's second law. We have that the electric force is QE. That is an equation on your equation sheet. We know the magnetic force is QVB, also on your equation sheet. S set those equal to zero because we don't want any acceleration up or down, right? No acceleration. And therefore, we can solve this for V. The velocity is E over B. Only particles with a very specific velocity where the electric field divided by the magnetic field strength will pass straight through. Hence the name velocity selector. The second part of the mass spectrometer is the mass selector with a magnetic field again pointing out of the page but no electric field any longer. This problem will assume that the magnitude of both magnetic fields are the same. So the magnetic field in here is going to have the same strength as the magnetic field over here. Particles getting to this point here will all have the same speed because they've all gone through the velocity selector. Any particles that were going too fast or too slow would have already hit the walls here. They would have been deflected up or down and therefore they did not make it into the mass selector. What's going to happen to the speed of the particles once they're in the mass selector? The magnetic field in the mass selector will exert a centripetal force on the particles that are entering. The force exerted is always perpendicular to the instantaneous displacement of the particles, so no work is done and therefore their speed stays constant. They enter uniform circular motion. Remember, magnetic fields can steer particles into circular motion, but they can't speed them up or slow them down. Let's solve for the mass of these particles. So we have Newton's second law, F equals ma. Now the only force being exerted on the particles over here is the magnetic force, and they're now moving in uniform circular motion, which means their acceleration is centripetal, so we can replace a with v squared over r. All right, we can go ahead and solve this equation for m. 
Once again, one of these V's is going to cancel out with one of those. We rearrange, solve for M. And we previously solved for V from the velocity selector. Remember, V had to be equal to E over B if it were to make it to this point at all. So therefore, instead of V, we can put in E over B. When you put in E over B, it puts E into the denominator and then B into the numerator. This is some algebra. That becomes B squared up in the numerator. So therefore, different masses are going to actually land at different locations on this screen here. Uh, various masses will separate out along this screen because they're going to have different orbital radii. If we go back and take that exact same equation, but instead of solving it for mass, we solve it for radius, we get mv over qb. And this is not putting v equals e over b in, we're just leaving it as v. Particles with more mass are going to end up farther down the detector screen since the radius of their motion is larger. This is because all the particles entering the mass selector have the same velocity, charge, and they're entering the same magnetic field. The only difference is mass. So the greater the mass, the greater the radius. Now remember, when you're solving problems like this, that's the radius, not the diameter of the circle. So if you're given where the particle lands, this distance is actually the diameter of the circle. You would have to cut it in two so that it would be the radius, right? So make sure you're careful about whether you're dealing with the radius or the diameter because this is the radius.